Welcome back, folks, to a brand new video. Italian cities are very unique places that's full of art, history, and culture that will easily impress you. From the artistic filled streets of Florence to the romantic canals of Venice, every Italian city has something unique about it. Now, I've put together a list of some of my favorite locations, and this will be a two part video. So let's take a look at 10 beautiful cities to visit in Italy. Number one, Rome. A city that time and time again makes it to the list of most beautiful cities in Europe. The eternal city, the capital, and one of the oldest in the world. While the giant Colosseum, one of the seven wonders of the world takes credit, there are still tons of things to do in the city. Home to over 800 medieval fountains, so take long walks through the winding cobble streets. Hanging out at the iconic Pantheon, or take your time admiring the Roman Forum and the stunning castle of St. Angelo. Plus you have very strong coffee, homemade pizza and pasta you won't want to leave. And if you do have the time, you can explore the Vatican City. Now, I'm actually here right now making this video. So if you do want to see a new series coming up, don't forget to check out that in the middle of February. Number two, Milan. So the first monument to check out in this city is the Milan Cathedral. Duomo di Milano. The symbol of the city is located in Piazza del Duomo. The historic center and the, and the best starting point for a stay in Milan. It started in 1386. The construction of the cathedral took nearly 500 years. So it's such a sight to behold. You also have the Galleria. Constructed during the late 1800s, the Galleria is one of the oldest enclosed shopping malls in the world. And there's one amazing place that has some gelato, but you can check that out in the Milan video I've already made in the description below. So it's a great way to immerse yourself in the hustle and bustle of Milan as you walk around in the Galleria. So Milan is a solid good weekend off and you can head straight to Lake Como which brings me to the next one. An ancient city with a history stretching back to Roman times and it's best known as a setting for Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet. It's a very picturesque city, filled with Renaissance palaces, Roman ruins, and medieval buildings. At the heart of the city lies the mini Roman amphitheatre. And as you walk around on the banks of the river Adige, you will find Castel Vecchio, which was built in 1354 or 55 which is a very impressive defensive fortress and you do get some stunning views. And there's another special place just a stone's throw away from Verona. 50 minutes by car, just off Lago di Garda, you will find the sanctuary of Madonna della Corona. means Our Lady of the Crown. Now being located between Milan and Venice, the city does receive a bit less attention compared to those two, so really really take advantage. Bergamo. 
a city in the Lombardy region of Italy, located in the far north of the country. Bergamo comprises of a walled historic center known as the Upper Town. It's steeped in medieval history, and so much so that some parts seem untouched since they were the first built. The 16th century Venetian defensive walls and gates were so impenetrable that the town was never conquered. So the highlights here are to visit the Piazza Vecchia and the upper city itself, La Citta Alta. It's perfect for walking around and checking out the town. And of course, don't miss out on visiting the Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore. So overall, Bogomo is famous for its wealth of artistic treasures, very medieval town and atmosphere, and a real tale of two cities. Venice. A captivating city in Italy. Spans 117 islands, connected by 150 canals, and approximately 400 bridges or pieces of pavement. Filled with elegant palaces and navigated by iconic gondolas. St. Mark's Square, nestled in the heart of the city, will showcase all those wonders like St. Mark's Basilica and the Campanale. So this is a great city and let's be real here, no matter what the crowds, no matter how many people visit, you should never miss out on this location. It's a once in a lifetime city to visit and I think it's quite a living masterpiece. Genoa. Sometimes overshadowed by the popularity of other Italian cities like Rome and Venice, you think why would I need to go to Genoa, especially as an hour and 15 minutes away is Cinque Terre. But Genoa nevertheless is still one of Italy's true hidden gems. As the capital city of the Liguria region on the northwest coast of Italy, it's most associated as the birthplace of Christopher Columbus. But the city's shining crown is clearly its historic center, with narrow, winding streets that reveal surprising gems at every turn. So you really need to just walk around a very compact city because you can see a lot of things and get a lot of uh, attractions out of the way in a very short space of time. Give it a go. The next city is Florence. Few cities in the world can rival Florence for its artistic style. It's everything you think it should be. The thriving, buzzing heart of Tuscany, with a huge sense of history on every street corner. Now Florence certainly deserves a spot at the top of anyone's list of places to visit in the country, let alone Tuscany. But how can you ignore a city that was the birthplace of the Italian Renaissance? Filled with world famous art museums and galleries that even if you're not interested in, I highly recommend that you should visit. The city's architectural grandeur and world class museums such as the Uffizi Gallery and the Academia, also housing masterpieces by Da Vinci, Michelangelo and of course Botticelli. Now these are timeless institutions, all make it totally worthwhile to visit. And if you do happen to go out far earlier in the morning, you can capture some of the best highlights of the city while everyone's asleep. Now this terrace above the city 
is an absolute standard stop for anyone who wants to see the beautiful views of Florence. During the busy tourist season, I think the best time for you to go would be super early in the morning or for sunset. So although you can get a 360 degree panorama view of Florence from the dome of the cathedral, only from this terrace can you fully appreciate how Brunelleschi's dome dominates the city centre. Number 8. Naples From its charming waterfront under the shadow of Vesuvius to its beautiful and bustling historic centre. Naples is a stunning city, well known for its warmth but not only in terms of the weather. Overlooking the sea and with Vesuvius in the background, Campania's capital city has a colourful centuries-old history. There's even plenty to explore underground in the catacombs, but make sure you go with organised tours where you'll be able to check out the labyrinth of tunnels that lie beneath the city. But of course, it's Naples. The gastronomic tourism here is literally unrivaled. Pizza folks, the most gorgeous pizza you will ever taste. And I will literally pack a few pineapples in my backpack and then slowly put them in. Take away of course. Emilia Romagna. In a region as overwhelmingly foodie as Emilia Romagna, it's only natural that its capital, Bologna, is dubbed La Grassa, the fat one. This is the ultimate foodie destination, where you can organize a whole gourmet tour around artisan producers of, let's say, prosciutto, mortadella and some intense balsamic vinegar and Italy's king of cheeses, Parmesan. But in between the eating and the drinking, you have the magnificent cities of Bologna, Parma, Ferrara and Ravenna. Known for its stunning old town, beautiful beaches and some delicious food, making it a perfect destination for relaxing and enjoying that authentic Italian getaway. But one of the best places to start is to visit the Old Town, also known as Bari Vecchia, a charming area with a maze of narrow streets and alleyways lined with colourful buildings and some traditional shops. So you will find plenty of quaint cafes and restaurants here that serve up local specialities like orecchiette pasta, and some fresh seafood. But one of the most iconic landmarks in Bari is the Basilica di San Nicola, a stunning church that's home to the relics of Saint Nicholas, the inspiration for Santa Claus. And there you have it folks, just a taste of some of the most beautiful cities in Italy. Now this video is part one and part two will be next week. And for that video, I will showcase some of the most underrated cities that I highly recommend that you should visit. That's it from me and I'll see you all on the next one.